everyone, welcome back to OC Avery. This video today is all on keeping and breeding yellow hammers and other species of native bunting to the UK. Now this may apply to other European bunting species, but I do know there are a few different species of bunting, such as the indigo bunting, um, that really wouldn't be in, um, it, which wouldn't match to this video um, and, and things I'm going to talk you through in this video. Now we're going to start off by looking at the flight that I plan to breed my buntings in. So as you can see here, this is my pair of buntings, so these are yellow hammers uh, and they are two 2020 birds, so they're both current year birds uh, and they are both actually hand reared. So as you can see, much steadier than would be a lot of the parent reared buntings. Um, these guys obviously both have, have captive parents, I got them both from uh, reliable sources and breeders. Um, you know, so both unrelated as well, um, and obviously these guys were hand reared, which means that they're going to be much more steady and used to humans, which is going to be a massive benefit when it comes to actually breeding them. Um, in terms of making sure that the pair aren't spooked um, massively by the presence of a human, which is obviously myself. Uh, so from the flights and looking at the breeding habits, we're then going to take a look at the diet of the birds through the seasons and then to finish the video off, we're going to look at a few clips of the birds in show cages just so you can get a better and closer look. So let's go straight to the flights. So you may recognise this flight from a few uh, episodes ago uh, where I actually had the crossbills. Now this is a four feet wide by eight foot deep flight with six feet in height. Uh, and this is where I actually plan to breed my buntings, so my yellow hammers. Uh, and the reason for that being is it's a spacious flight to keep the cock bird fit, as well as to keep him away from the hen when she is on the eggs, uh, and just, just really give them room to get away from each other in the event that they need to, as bunting cocks are uh, sometimes quite territorial in the breeding season. Now the reason as well as I've chose this flight is because what we have is we have the door here but we also have this sort of private and secluded section which is important when breeding buntings because they are quite um, timid and scarce birds in terms of that they don't like humans and they do like to keep um, themselves to themselves and really be, be keeping away from uh, any anything that's busy. So if you have observed yellow hammers in the wild they are quite secretive birds they tend to stay in hedgerows uh, around farmland uh, and really don't make their presence known uh, except the cock birds which will sit high in, um, in trees or sometimes on the top of the bushes on lookout giving a quick sing to either attract a mate or or you know ju just for his own pleasure and then back down into the bush so they are quite scarce birds and not easy to see. Uh, which is why I've chosen this flight again is because we have this secluded area which is where I plan on actually putting the nest for the pair. So uh, in captivity at least uh, the, the yellow hammers prefer to nest at about four feet off the ground which is quite low compared to a lot of other uh, birds uh, and the reason being for that um, is because it's just it's so it's more um, secretive more hidden uh, and obviously uh, generally birds try and nest as high as possible because it gives them a vantage point uh, but obviously that could give them a bit more um, yeah a bit more openness to predators so in captivity they tend to nest low which is why again I chose this area so at four feet high I'm just about six feet tall so that's going to be about here so for me I plan on putting the nest right there. Now there's two styles of nest um, which I plan on using. So I'm going to have one here and probably another one here uh, or I might try it in another corner or along the other side of the wall or maybe even under here which is a little bit lower about three foot. So it is these cocoa fibre nests and the reason being for those is that they are sort of a natural surface which the um, yellow hammers would uh, nest on. So yellow hammers tend to build their nests out of um, straw, hay, uh, fine grasses, fine dry grasses uh, and uh, other similar materials like that, maybe fine twigs uh, and other things uh, as well as sheep wool and other naturally occurring furs. <coughs> now what I will be supplying them with next year is coconut fibre because that is as close as I can get to a, um, a natural nest um, nest material but I will also be trying to get some dry grasses 
and some hay um, to you know dry them out over the winter or at least early spring so that by the time the birds come into condition which will be about April May time when I think these guys should be breeding then the, the grasses will be dry I'll put them on the floor in here and the, the pair can make the nest uh, so I plan on sitting this nest about at that height. Now what I want you to imagine is there's a Christmas tree here and the reason being for that is because I try and keep all of my flights um, planted and as natural as possible. So what I do is I just take um, Christmas trees that have been used uh, in about January sort of time. Uh, real Christmas trees generally just because I find that they're just much easier to deal with and you get more rather than the fake Christmas tree because you have to stand the whole Christmas tree up then. Uh, whereas I, what I do is I get a real one, chop it off at about four feet and I'll place that nest in the corner with the Christmas tree around it and then a bit of Christmas tree on either side just so it's private for them and they only really can can look out of this area. It's just going to be a much better environment for the birds uh, and I think that that really should be set successful. Now I will have this open nest around there with um, shrubbery around it but also what I'll be doing is using a external nest like this. Uh, this is fake Christmas tree so I've got that on all the sides and then that is once again another cocoa fibre nest uh, and th the reason for that is just again it's a, a natural nesting surface for the pair um, and for, the, for those types of birds. Now just remember that this counts for all buntings so generally all buntings would choose that style of nest. Um, obviously there are certain exceptions so things that you must take into account are, is uh, like the, the natural habitat of the birds. So with buntings as I'm talking about I'm thinking reed buntings, curl buntings, yellow hammers um, and, and birds like that. There are also snow buntings but I believe the snow buntings are actually ground nesters and they nest on hollows in the floor but once again the same sorts of material. Uh, and the idea of this nest then is that I'll put that there so that's a bit more secluded um, in terms of the size so the only place the birds can come out of and into is the front uh, but I might put it there, I might put it on this wall, I might put that slightly higher so I might put that up there um, or I could just even have it a bit higher like there um, and obviously we're going to have to see what the pair choose now generally in captivity they do nest it about four feet off the ground but I'm sure exceptions do occur so the idea of that is just it's just secluded so really they are quite private and secretive birds so make sure that you are supplying um, a private and secretive place for them now um, this flight also they would have to share and the reason being is this is quite a big flight for just one pair of birds uh, and my idea in here is that I'll be having the yellow hammers which I presume will be nesting in here and then we're going to have the green finches in here or a pair of green finches which is a plant I'll be having their nest up the top or on this wall and then I am tempted to put in a pair of siskins um, but that will be a nest along this side or down here away from the buntings again because I don't want any issues to occur in that sense. Um, but also just having other birds in with them might actually be helpful because the territorial cock bird has got something else to, um, to give his attention to which would be the cock bird, either a greenfinch cock or a siskin cock, leaving the hens to the nest. Um, but if not, if I didn't choose this flight then I would be choosing what the flight next door which we have the solid wall between the two uh, and I would be having the nest halfway in and it, just keep it more secluded. But what we'll have to do is see how it um, develops and what I decide to put where near the time in the breeding season. Um, obviously it will be this style of nest if not that pan. Now buntings are really quite uh, an interesting bird in terms of their diet through the seasons. Um, so we're really at the moment all I'm feeding them on um, in terms of a, a basic diet is just a, a standard British finch mix, very very simple uh, and nothing too extraordinary. The link to that will be in the description by BJF Feeds, uh, they supply all of my feeds um, in terms of the, the big basic mixes uh, which I mix my own from as well as the standard British mix. So um, I, that's what I give them as um, right now, so I, I'm going to give that to them from about September uh, at all the way around to uh, about March, April sort of time when they start to come into condition for breeding. And the main reason for that is because it's not expensive, but also that the birds would eat that generally 
um, and, and naturally at this time of year when seeds like that are available. Um, however, something you must take into account as well is that the buntings especially really um, in, in the breeding season basically turn into soft bills um, where, where they feed almost primarily uh, insects and, um, and, and grubs and, and things like that to their, their young. Uh, which is why I actually have a few products here. So these are all from Bavistas uh, Pet Center. So that is down um, down London way, I believe. So a link to the Bavistas website will be in the description, as well as a link to the Facebook page. Uh, and this is where I have got all of my products uh, and everything I'm going to give this pair in the run up to the breeding season and throughout the breeding season. So generally they're insectivores throughout uh, the breeding season and on the run-up to the breeding season I'm going to be supplementing insects and different things that I plan to feed them on and have them rearing the young on uh, mainly just because I want to make sure that the pair are used to that sort of food uh, so it doesn't it's no drastic change in diet it's sort of gradual but as well to make sure that they're taking it so the first thing I've got here is actually a box of frozen pinky maggots and um, they are just a, a small, small maggot. Uh, these are white and that's great because I want to be giving them the natural. Uh, obviously you can get live uh, and you will generally get that from a, 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 an angling place. Um, and I have given pinky maggots to uh, my chaffinches when I bred them this year um, from angling shops, obviously live, but they only really come in pink. Uh, which is fine, which is why they're called pinkies generally. Um, but it's just an artificial colouring that I really don't want to be giving them. Uh, so these aren't uh, any, you know, these are natural colour, just white maggots, completely natural like that. And they are frozen and that is an absolute massive help uh, and, and stuff because really, um, you know, that, that means that I can just take out what I need and then put the rest back in the freezer, whereas with live, I've got to feed it within two or three days before they turn into the the, the, the sort of, um, I can't remember what they're called, um, chrysalis. Now I go fishing as well, so I really shouldn't know that. Um, but they're just basically when a maggot is in the, the mid stage from maggot to fly, the mid stage from when it converts basically. Uh, so that is the first thing. So that is from Bavistas and that is frozen pinky maggots. So the next one is frozen mealworms. Now um, you can get these from most pet stores uh, and generally they're for, for reptiles, but obviously we give them to birds. Um, and these are once again frozen, so I can just take out what I need and put the rest back in and these will last for however, however long as I need them to last. Um, obviously it just depends on how I dish them out. Uh, and obviously I can get uh, live ones, which I will do as well. I will be getting live ones for them as well. Uh, but the main idea of that is these are just going to be for the run up uh, to the breeding season as well as throughout the breeding season. So I can give them as soon as they need them. Uh, but also I will be trying to supplement the live food in. So live mealworms, live pinky maggots uh, and other things like that. Um, so we don't want them to just rear their young on um, insects alone or at least one species of insect because they're going to you know just not be healthy now um, obviously we are going to have a mix of pinky maggots and mealworms for them but also I want to get them on some sort of soft bill based egg food because it's all insect based so it's all insect based protein which is going into the chicks and um, now this is something that Bavista sent me as a bit of a you know an, an extra thank you so very big thank you to James at Bavistas for that and um, obviously that that's a uh, that, that's absolutely great so this is actually egg food with shrimp uh, and obviously a shrimp um, is a crustacean so it's just a, a, a sea based protein actually which is which is great really um, and I'm going to get the pair on some of this and get it going into the system hopefully we start taking it and then it'll be great for getting the oysters reared on uh, and that is obviously mainly a soft bill base as well but then I've got this and this is uh, it's called Bevo or Bevo universal soft bill mix uh, and it's, a, it's an insect based soft bill mix. I had this this year for the chaffinches, which proved very successful um, when rearing their young. The young were absolutely fantastic on this, um, and also the pair took it. So 
that is a soft oil mix. So um, I would like to say that just make sure in the breeding season, you treat your, your uh, buntings or you know my yellow hammers like that, you treat them as soft bills because they really do turn into soft bills during the breeding season in terms of the diet. Now this is a five kilo mix because I know that they take this because I only recently ran out of it. Um, it's not expensive, that was um, that, that, that was 20 pounds for five kilo and for, for one pair of birds, that, I can promise you that's probably going to last me quite a while and then obviously they will be rearing young on it so I might end up buying another bag. Um, but either way, it's definitely worth it for, for getting some soft bills um, yeah, or, or some, some buntings really, some youngster buntings. Um, so I'm going to be supplementing that through them. Uh, now at the moment, how I'll be supplementing the uh, soft bill mix, the universal soft bill insect mix, as well as the um, egg food with shrimp, is that will be going straight into um, finger drawers. And the main reason for that is I don't want to be giving too much that, um, it, that they're, they're already converting into that almost breeding state. Um, but I want to make sure that it's in the diet and they are getting used to it. Um, as well as just making sure that they are taking the frozen food. So what I'll probably start to do for the first um, the first few weeks that I'll be taking it uh, and just, just starting to want to take it is I'll mix all of this in with their actual, um, with their general seed mix. Um, so the general seed mix is just once again the British uh, mix. And what I'll do is I'll get that in a jug and get some of this and I'll mix some of the uh, universal egg food in there. We'll also get the egg food with shrimp in there, as well as a few of the um, mealworms and a few of the pinkies once they're defrosted. We just want to make sure that we're taking them ready for so the breeding. Not only will I be supplementing that, um, but they are all from Bavistas, so I'll leave links in the description to every single product I have here from Bavistas, but also their website and their Facebook. Um, but also other products you can get from Bavistas are conditioning seed. So I've just ordered this. This was 15 pounds for five kilo of conditioning seed. Very good price if you ask me, because it is really an absolutely fantastic mix. Um, in here, it really suits all birds. So we have Niger, Perilla, Chicory, Lettuce, Millet, Hemp, Rape, Wild Seed mix and Plantain. Um, and they really are just going to be absolutely fantastic for conditioning the birds. So I won't be supplementing any conditioning seed until uh, the run up to the breeding season. So for the crossbills that is actually starting now because the crossbills will generally start from about the start of January. I'm aiming for the mid of January to the start of February for mine, just to let it go a little bit, um, yeah, uh, not not as mild from from the winter. I don't really, I really don't want to be having snow on the ground and the, the crossbills rearing or on eggs. It's just not going to end well. It obviously could end up with egg binding or. Um, you know, killing the eggs or killing the chicks or even killing the parents, which is the last thing we want. So I'm going to keep them off a little bit longer before I let them go um, in full breeding. So um, the crossbills are on that, but only small amounts. For everything else, they will be on that from uh, from February. So uh, that, that that's including the buntings and that's really just to build up all the oils and the things like that. Other bits from the feasters, we also have some at Pearl Morby. Now, I haven't tried Pearl Morby before with the birds, so I only ordered a kilo, which was eight pounds. Um, and what you do with this is you soak it in water. Uh, the, the little, sort of the little grains will soak up the water and then I'll just be implementing that through the, um, the uh, finger drawers. Um, so it's just really, I just want to be getting the birds and working them onto it so that when it becomes breeding season that they have this. Because uh, I want it going into the young but also um, as I've seen in the canary room um, it's very very useful um, when weaning the youngsters. But not only do the vistas provide um, seeds uh, and uh, food mixes, they also provide nesting materials and um, nesting products. So I am um, I've only ordered a small amount and the reason just being is because I'm not going to need any just yet and what I will do is a bulk order with them uh, in about March, February time. Um, but the reason I've ordered a small amount which is just premium jute here um, and that is actually just for the crossbills when they're starting to build their nests um, from about mid-Jan which is the plan. So with buntings then make sure that you do treat them 
as soft girls in the breeding season um, in terms of the diet because they absolutely love all, all of the, um, the, the, the the insects and, and that sort of thing but I will also be supplementing of course the general British mix because it's good to get the seeds in there as well in order to give them a mix and balanced diet. Uh, also something to supplement them in the breeding season um, is, is, is something that they don't get a lot of through um, through through insects is calcium. So make sure you have some calcium looks or any calcium supplement available to them. I'll be mixing that in with the egg food, uh, the, the egg food with shrimp and the live food as well because I want to make sure that they're taking enough because not only will that be for making the eggs uh, in the hen, it's also for rearing the chicks and making sure they're strong and healthy. Uh, and I will be getting them also on some 30 vitamin um, for them next year. Uh, and that's just obviously going to increase fertility, give them vitamins, minerals and everything they need uh, to increase the fertility of the eggs, which is obviously something that is very important. Also with buntings, uh, they are quite heavy bathers, which I have noticed in the past um, few weeks since I bought the pair. And um, really what well, I, I have not had a, you know, I've always had a bath in there for them they're, they're never not without a bath um, and I have took it out just for the moment because I want to make sure that um, both both drawers are dry so I can, when I clean them out it's just it's just easier um, but they've only not had one in for a day so I took that out yesterday and they'll get one tomorrow once I've cleaned them out and um, so make sure that especially during breeding season it is vital to make sure they're having baths uh, to keep them in good condition um, and really just keep them happy healthy and wanting to breed um, so I am giving them all big water baths, big trays for next year. I'm going to have a rock in the centre in the tray, loads of water so that they can bath in there as much as they need. They have all the water there as well. I will be giving them water in the D cups as well with supplements in, so the Fertivate, the Calcium Lux and all the different things like that. Um, and so that's really just to keep them in good condition and good feather. Uh, and, and really just taking them through the breeding season as happy as possible. But not only just having a big pot of water there just for bathing, it also does attract a few insects. So if there's some flies or, or something like that hanging around the water, going for a drink, well, they're not going to be there long because they're going to take them and take them to the young and feed them to them. Um, so really, it's, it's all about making sure that you create a natural environment for them. Uh, you've got all of the food you need, so the soft bill mixes, uh, as well as uh, live food. You're going to have some natural seeds there as well, but also plenty of water for them to bathe in, uh, as well as a few supplements there, so the and the calcium looks. So to end this video, um, we're going to just take a look at the birds now in the show cages, running in the show cages, just so you can get a really good and close look at them. Uh, you may notice that it's also quite much of a shorter video compared to my usual videos. And the main reason for that is I wanted to make sure that everything is uh, short and concise. You're getting all the information you need to know uh, for keeping buntings and, and breeding them. Uh, obviously for me, these are my yellow buntings or yellow hammers. Um, and then it all also, it's half past four and it's dark. Uh, you know, it, it's mid-November and it's getting dark. It's half past four, five o'clock. So, um, you yeah, know, th there's not as much time to film in the daylight. Um, but I, I felt that with everything that I needed to say and show, I've shown you in the flights and then everything else we've done inside the large finch shed. Uh, obviously, that is a massive thank you to Bavistas as well for all of the products you've seen. So make sure that you do go and buy uh, products from Bavistas. The links are all in the description for all the products that you've seen here today as well as their Facebook account and just the general website uh, so just to recap on the products by Bavistas we have the Bevo uh, Universal Soft Build Mix for the Yellow Hammers for next year we have the egg food with shrimp we're going to be trying that out as well that's only a small bag we also have the frozen mealworms and the frozen pinkies so um, absolutely 100% recommend that you go to them um, for any of your sort of live food live insects and things like that obviously these aren't live um, but they're as close as you're going to get um, without having to waste them if they don't eat them 
We have the conditioning mix, so that's all going to be supplemented into the bird's diet in the next few months. The pearl more bind, uh, obviously this is only a one kilo bag, it's just for trial this for myself. I just want to try my birds on it, see how they get on with it. I hopefully we should have some good results um, and, and getting them to take it with no problems and then if we do I'm going to be feeding that next year to the youngsters and then we just have the jute mix as well so you can get almost everything from the beasters that you need, food supplements, nesting supplies and everything like that. So if you haven't already please hit the subscribe button, uh, we are growing subscribers quite rapidly at the moment so please make sure you hit the subscribe button as you don't want to miss any of my future videos on any of the birds including the buntings as we are breeding them next year. Hit the notification bell as that will notify you every single time I upload a new video so you won't miss any of them. And hit the thumbs up uh, and like the video uh, and that just shows me that you're enjoying these videos, you're getting out of what you want. And uh, if you didn't enjoy the video then please leave in the comments as to why you didn't uh, as I'm always looking to improve my content and make sure that you guys are happy and entertained by what I'm showing you. Um, also make sure you share the video with someone who el el someone else who might want to breed buntings and who will be breeding buntings and anyone who's interested in breeding buntings in the British bird and agriculture hobby. Uh, so thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.